to confirm fetal health and well-being, a lot of what we do focuses on ultrasound. In fact, it's almost impossible to practice obstetrics today without having access to ultrasound. And ultrasound performed across different trimesters gives you different information. And in general, we would recommend that provided resources are, are adequately provided and that all patients should have a minimum of two ultrasound scans, one in the first trimester and one, as I say, the anomaly scan. The first trimester ultrasound is very important to confirm a couple of things. First of all, that the fetus, the baby, is alive and is viable. Unfortunately, we do diagnose a lot of miscarriages in the first trimester, and the sooner or most efficiently that we can do that and provide patients reassurance that they're not having a miscarriage is tremendously important. Knowing about the number of babies present is very, very important because the care pathway that a patient will go down is very different if they have one two, or as Mary mentioned, very rarely we see triplets, but we do see them. Um, and I'm going to show you a little bit more about this, but at 11, 12, 13 weeks, a detailed ultrasound scan can tell an awful lot about the health and well-being of the baby, both in terms of risk of genetic chromosomal abnormalities like Down syndrome, but also in terms of general health, such as fetal heart defects. Um, unfortunately, ultrasound shows us quite a lot of abnormalities. It's not always reassuring in the first trimester. We can diagnose um, babies in the first trimester that have serious kidney problems, babies that have anencephaly. This is where the skull bones don't form. We heard earlier from Louise about the importance of taking folic acid. Um, this is mostly to reduce the risk of things such as spina bifida and also anencephaly. And this baby here in the middle has poorly formed skull bones such that the brain tissue doesn't um, develop properly. And here is a baby that has a very thick fold of skin at the back of the neck, um, a very strong marker in the first trimester for a baby who has genetic chromosomal abnormalities like Down syndrome or indeed other abnormalities such as heart defects. So we can tell a lot of fetal abnormalities in the first trimester and the absence of these is also tremendously reassuring for the vast majority of patients. I mentioned earlier that in about seven of the 19 maternity hospitals in Ireland, all pregnant women get a routine anomaly scan, an abnormality scan at around 20 to 24 weeks gestation. This is a head to toe scan through the baby to confirm all of the baby's anatomy to the best of our ability. And ultrasound today at 20 to 24 weeks can pick up an awful lot of abnormalities and can give tremendous reassurance to patients that everything is fine. Um, and we are striving and working to try and improve the access of all patients to anomaly scans in Ireland. Um, unfortunately, anomaly scans will sometimes confirm that there's something wrong. Here is a baby that has a spina bifida, a sac of fluid at the base of the spine. Here's a baby that has hydrocephalus, um, an increase of fluid within the baby's skull. Um, this is a baby, a cross-section through the abdomen, where you seem to have a two stomach um, findings, which would be a sign of an obstruction of the bowel, which is also a major red flag for having a baby with Down syndrome. Um, this is a 3D scan where you can see very clearly the baby's forehead, the eyes and the nose, and just below the nose is a very clear cleft lip. Um, and here is a baby that has a very large hole in the center of the heart. Now, it is very, very important for us for delivering antenatal care and improving care for babies that we diagnose abnormalities such as these in advance. And that is because if we know that a baby, for example, has a serious heart defect, perhaps it wouldn't be wise for that patient to deliver at home, or perhaps it wouldn't be wise for that patient to deliver at a, a community hospital that is many miles away from a major pediatric center with cardiac services. Perhaps that woman should come in on a Monday morning into one of the major Dublin maternity hospitals, have her labor induced so that she can deliver in a control circumstance with all of the various specialists around. So knowing about these fetal abnormalities in advance is very important, especially in the Irish healthcare setting, the way our hospitals are arranged, to optimize the care for that baby. And there's very good evidence now that if a baby has, for example, a heart defect, just 
knowing about it in advance greatly improves the outcome for the baby because you avoid emergency um, delivery plans and uh, optimizes the care for the baby. This is a video of a CVS, a chorionic villus sampling procedure. For many years, um, the test that we did to try and confirm if the baby's chromosomes, the genetics were normal, um, and to uh, rule things like Down syndrome, were invasive tests. Involved putting a needle in through the abdomen, or in this case, a plastic straw through the cervix and into the placenta. Cells are taken from the placenta, are sent to the genetics lab, and in one or two days, you get an answer which confirms that the baby's chromosomes are normal, or unfortunately sometimes may confirm that the baby has, for example, Down syndrome. A very good test, an extremely accurate test, gives absolute certainty of diagnosis, but has a risk of triggering a miscarriage. About 1% of women who have a CVS test like this will have, unfortunately, a miscarriage. So this is an amniocentesis where a needle has been put in through the abdominal wall into the amniotic fluid to take some fluid out and to also test it, test the fluid to see if the baby has any sort of a genetic or chromosomal abnormality, typically done around 15 or 16 weeks. An excellent test because of the precision, the accuracy of the results, but again, because it's a needle going into the uterus, there's a small risk, about one in a thousand that you could trigger a miscarriage by doing a test like this. So these two tests were the mainstay of prenatal diagnosis for many years when it came to looking for conditions such as Down syndrome or conditions that were associated with um, a, a, a older maternal age. And the approach was that if you were over an arbitrary age, such as 35, you were offered these tests. And if you were under 35, nothing was said. Um, that is a tremendously inefficient way of uh, checking for fetal abnormalities. Um, and it ended up with worrying a lot more patients than needed to, and also a lot of uh, pregnancies lost um, because of these invasive tests. So it really comes down to what are the goals of prenatal testing for these abnormalities? What are we trying to achieve? I think in the vast majority of cases, what we're trying to achieve is to give patients reassurance. There's general knowledge out there that there sometimes may be a fetal abnormality, in particular as one gets older, and patients often come in to us and ask us, is my baby normal? Will my baby be healthy? So we do have tests that can give patients information on this. But as I've also mentioned, it's also about optimizing the care and improving outcomes for the baby. Um, and that is in particularly important in Ireland, where we can try and improve where and when a patient may deliver if they are known to have a baby with an abnormality. And in addition, obviously, providing this information to patients also empowers women, empowers families to make their own choices and preparations for um, the rest of their pregnancy. If you uh, confirm with the patient that their baby has a very serious abnormality. Some patients will continue on with their pregnancy, uh, whereas other patients may choose not to continue with the pregnancy. But patients have to be given that opportunity to make those decisions for themselves.